Joanna Alavec, more popularly known as Jojo, an extremely talented singer, songwriter, and an actress. She achieved a huge amount of success very early in her career, that by the age of 16, she was already preparing to release her second album. She was born to be a superstar, but it all went downhill just because of her record label. But this wasn't the end of her story, so today let me tell you the full story of her career. My real name is Joanna, that was the name I was given when I was born, but Jojo's always been like a nickname in my family. It was either Jojo or Joe or Midget or Stinky or, you know, I'd, I always had several nicknames. Jojo had always been interested in music since she was just two years old, and she started performing locally at the age of four. I've been singing like ever since I could talk. Music was always in my house, like my mom sang church. She was a church soloist and my dad would pull out the guitar every once in a while. And they never really wanted to do it on the level that I wanted to do it. I would be writing songs on my notebook in school when I really should have been thinking about math, but I wasn't. I was always thinking about music. When I was younger, I listened to a lot of soulful music. My, that was music that um, my mom kind of turned me on to. Things like Stevie Wonder and George Benson and Aretha Franklin, Whitney Houston, Mariah Carey. I got the idea she had musical talent when she would hear a song once on the radio or on a CD and duplicate it perfectly at an incredibly young age. People would, they'd do a double take and they would think, you know, they would think it was the radio at first and then they'd look at this little kid, you know, so, and they were just amazed. Jojo was offered her first record deal when she was just six years old, but her mother turned it down because she thought that she was too young for it. And just about that time, Jojo also made her first TV appearance on the TV show called Kids Say Z Darn Das Things. Okay, and I pressed the button. In 1999, Jojo, still a little girl of 8 years old, got the chance to go to her first concert, but little did she know that she would end up impressing Britney Spears, who herself was very young at the time, and her management offered Jojo a record deal, but she turned it down because again, she was too young for it. First concert I went to was like uh, a summer jam in Boston and it was in 1999 so I was eight years old and it was like Britney Spears, Backstreet Boys, New Kids on the Block, like a bunch of people and that very same time I walked, I sang my way through security because I was so precocious and I was like people need to hear me so I sang for each security guard until I made my way to Britney Spears and then sang for her and then her management offered me a production deal so that was my first concert. <laughs> Yeah, I was nine. Wow. What or eight, yeah. What was her reaction? She was like, wow, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a sweet southern. She was like 17 or 18 at the time. Yeah, 18. So she she was probably just freaked out that I was such a little girl with such a, I was like growling, like, you know, I was like, does he love me? I want to know. Like, I was such a weirdo. After competing on the television show, America's Most Talented Kids, 
She was noticed by record producer Vincent Herbert, who asked her to audition for Black Ground Records. She was about 12 now, so her mom finally let her sign her first record deal with Black Ground Records. She was assured that it was a great deal, and she had no experience with the music industry at that time, so she believed them. We met the right people, and I was signing a record contract. I just couldn't believe what I was hearing from this little 12 year old girl. It's mind blocking. And I've worked with uh, Tony Braxton, Whitney Houston. Destiny's Child, the list goes on and on. And this girl is like 12 years old and at the level of these guys, it's like unbelievable. I remember my mom and I skipping down the street from just signing the papers and it just felt like such a dream come true and like something that I really didn't know if it was attainable. And I didn't understand the work that was gonna come with it, but I knew that I was ready for whatever it entailed because you know, there was just no turning back. There was no going back to Massachusetts and living in a one bedroom apartment. That just wasn't something that, um, that I wanted to go back to. At the age of 13, Jojo released her first single, Leave Get Out, in 2004 and became the youngest solo artist in Billboard history to score a number one hit. Recording the first record was exciting, scary. I was in the studio with Soul Shock and Carlin. They're from Europe and they're excellent producers. They worked with a lot of great people and I had recorded the song that didn't end up even making the album. And then they played me this other song and I hated it. I thought it was garbage. I thought, why are you playing this for me? And it was Lee. Followed by her second single, Baby to You, and later released the self titled album, Jojo, which was certified platinum and sold over 4 million copies worldwide. At this time, she had more fame than any 13 years old could ever imagine. It was a dream come true for her, and she even appeared on TV shows like American Dreams. How old did you say you were? I didn't say. I'll tell you what, you can't be on bandstand today. But I bet my house in a couple of years, you're going to be standing right here on this stage. Oh, I'm sure of it. <sighs> hey, what's your name again? Linda. Linda Ronstadt. In 2006, she released her single, Too Little Too Late, from her second album, The High Road, and broke the record for biggest jump in the top three entry on the Billboard Hot 100 chart, and two follow-up singles, How To Touch Girl and Anything. Your new single, Too Little Too Late, broke a record a few weeks ago, went from number 66 to number three on the charts. That's the biggest jump ever in such yes. a short period of time. So Can you excited. quite believe it? I can't believe it. I'm just so excited. And the album comes out today, so so much going on. So much going on. I, I want to remind the audience, your first major deal was at 12, record deal. You had an album at 13. You became the youngest solo artist to land the number one on the Billboard and the youngest to be nominated for an MTV Video Music Award. And you're only 15. <laughs> How do you top all of that? There's so much more I want to do. I want to win Grammys. I want to, you know, break more records. So I always keep setting a new goal for myself and you know there's always so much more I can achieve. And yet how do you stay so grounded? You're so, I mean, the audience probably doesn't realize what a sweet young woman you are and polite and... This album was also a major hit and sold over 3 million copies worldwide. This album had a more mature theme and showcased her improved vocal skills. During this time she also started her acting career and starred in movies like RV alongside Robin Williams and Aquamarine co-starring Sarah Paxton and Emma Roberts. Good news. I'm adopted. Good one. Jojo, who is already a huge recording star, has a kind of confidence that you'd never find in a normal teenage girl. This is the worst I've ever been treated. Where do you get married? So even though she hadn't really had a lot of experience as an actress, she had a lot of natural chops. She's funny. She's a wisecracker. You, you, you got a boyfriend? Um, yeah, actually I'm engaged. <laughs> Unlikely. And she's smart as a whip, so all those things were, were great. And as soon as we put her on tape for her screen test, we immediately could see she has major screen presence. Yeah, there's no one way to get there and you refuse to go that way. That's really good. And she was also for the role of Hannah Montana, which she rejected because she didn't want to move to LA where the show was filmed. You've been offered Hannah Montana at one point in your career. So if that is the case, have you been like, oh, thank God I dodged the bullet because now I'm like a serious artist? Or have you been thinking, oh, I should have really taken that time? I think Miley Cyrus is a serious artist too. I, she's empowered and she's, totally her own her own thing and grown into her new persona so and again i just honestly that's not the way i live my life i'm not like oh so regretful of what i didn't do at 14. i just can't do that okay, that okay. sucks so no that's not how i feel would my bank account be a lot sweeter <laughs> Hell, yeah. 
Jojo achieved huge success for her age and she still had a lot to achieve. But just about this time, she also started to hear horror stories from other artists who were signed to her label before. Things started out good for her because Blackground distributed through Universal, which is a very powerful company. Jojo has signed a 7 album seal with Blackground. She originally had the plan of releasing one album every or every other year. But when she started getting the sense that things were not right, Blackground lost its distribution deal with Universal, enabling them to release any music. And also, Vincent Herbert, who had signed her to Blackground, left the label. It was devastating for her because she never had any siblings, and he was like a brother to her. Around 2009, Jojo had finished her third album titled All I Want Is Everything, which had a very different style as compared to her previous music, but without a distributor, her album couldn't be released. Where has Jojo been? I graduated high school, which is very important, and I've been back and forth in Boston and LA finishing up the album. The 18-year-old's third album, All I Want Is Everything, doesn't have released it yet. There were a bunch of kids here, and they were all singing her song, going at it. What does that feel like? That's so nice. I know that I'm going to feel them and hear them inside there, which is really nice to know that they're going to have my back. And whenever you hear people singing, your, you know, your songs, it's an amazing feeling. I can't wait for them to be singing my new songs when they come out. So th that's what I'm thinking about. <laughs> and when will that be? Th that will be soon. We're just getting some legal things still tied up with, with the label. And um, there's, a, there's a lot of transitions happening, but it, it's all going to work out by like the beginning of the new year. After some time, Blackground signed a distribution deal with Interscope Records, but they still didn't release her album. They told her that they won't release her music if she did not lose weight. So I was 18, and I was told that if I didn't look a certain way, that they wouldn't put out my music. So I was like, oh, if, if this is gonna make my music come out, then okay. I was on shots, like I was injecting myself with this thing from this dietitian that makes it so you're not hungry and it tricks your body into thinking you're pregnant. So then what the food that it would give the baby, it ends up like expelling. I wasn't even done growing necessarily. They wanted me to lose weight fast to shoot a video that they still deemed I was too quote unquote fat. But because I wanted my career to move forward and I was so scared, mm -hmm. I, I did it. And, and it just made me feel like, well, I, am I not good enough of a singer? Am I not special enough? Did you have Sally they didn't release her album and it ended up getting leaked online, which caused a huge loss for her because the album had a lot of potential. Did you ever think, I'm, my career's done? Yeah, I did. I thought, how can I come back from this? How can I, you know, too much time has passed. And I've had many low points, honestly. I was depressed. I was drinking a lot. I was, I just wanted to, to feel good and get out of my mind. And that was obviously trying to fill a hole that um, that I had. After seeing the damage the label was doing to her career, she was left with no other option but to file her first lawsuit against them at the age of 18. I had to sue my previous record label, so I filed the first one at 18. Basically, I felt that um, I had turned in several incarnations of an album mm -hmm. and they didn't have um, any means to put it out and it she felt like they come. didn't have a desire to put it out. She she still failed to get released from the label, but she did not give up. Although during this time, her popularity went down, but she still kept making new music and also released song covers online. Well, even when I wasn't able to release music officially through a label, I released music via mixtapes on the internet, and I was able to tour off that. And it's just wow. to be able to connect with your fans and know that you're still loved and, you know, you're not alone. So what's next uh, in your career? Well, I'm finishing up my album and a mixtape. The mixtape will come before the album. That'll probably come out next month. And uh, I've just really been writing and recording for the past, you know, extended period of time. And now just we want to be able to put some uh, material out. There's been a lot of things that have been going on behind the scenes. In 2010, Jojo released a free to download mixtape online through rap.com along with a music video for her song, In The Dark. In 2011, Jojo announced that the name of her new album is now Jumping Friends, and that she is shooting a video for her song, The Other Tip, which had a fresh and up tempo style. She wanted it to be released digitally, but her label put it on hold because they wanted to release it on CD. While most of the other labels at the time had moved to releasing music digitally, as a result, that single has been put up on hold forever. And that's also the reason that you can find her old songs on online platforms like Spotify. My records that I had recorded for Jumping Trains were more aggressive. It's 
something I'm really proud of. I worked on it for like two and a half years and it's literally a labor of blood, sweat, and tears. I wrote basically on every song in this album and Jumping Trains is... It's your baby. It's definitely my baby. Once again, she found herself stuck with this label who won't let her release any music from which she can actually earn. All she could do was release mixtapes or song covers online. In 2011, she released a remix of Rake's songs Marvin's Room Can Do Better through Rap of TV on YouTube, which got a lot of attention. This was a perfect time for her to release new music and she was finally able to release her new single after 5 years titled Disaster. And because of this song, she was also able to go on tour. During this time, she also made her Instagram and stayed connected with her fans. Jojo wanted to go into a new direction with her new album Jumping Friends and release her new single Demonstrate. It's sassy and it's sexy and I just think it sounds different so I'm really excited for people to hear that. I decided I wanted to go in a new direction when we decided Demonstrate would be the single because I just want to bring fresh energy into this project. You know, I, it deserves that and Demonstrate is kind of the first taste of what's to come with this and it sets a good precedent for that. But it was scrapped by Black on Records for unknown reasons. Even though a music video was already filmed for it, just like they did with her song The Other Chick. Both songs were supposed to be on her new album Jumping Trains, which got scrapped as well. In late 2012, Blackground lost its distribution deal with Interscope, causing delay in release of Jojo's album once again. So in December 2012, Jojo released another mixtape titled A Cape, along with a music video for her song Andre from the same mixtape. In 2013, Jojo filed a second lawsuit against Blackground Records for irreparable damages to her professional career. According to New York state law, minors can sign contracts that exceed more than 7 years. And as she signed the contract in 2004, it should have expired in 2011. Her lawyers used this law against Blackground and she was finally able to get released from the contract and get her freedom back after almost a decade. On the same day, she signed a new record deal with Atlantic Records. At 22, I sued them again and this time I really meant business and <laughs> thankfully I was able to, uh, the lawyers I worked with found a loophole, I was able to get out. That same day that I was released from my contract with Blackground, I signed to Atlantic Records and within the next couple months got right back into the studio and started working on music because I just wanted to make up for lost time. And now you're with this new label that's taking exactly. good care of you. I mean, did they look at you and go, God, Jojo, we're, come with us. Yeah, it kind of did feel like that, you know yeah, what I mean? let's go play. It felt like a fresh start, and then, for, you know, for a, for a while, I was like, well, hold on. Let me shed this Let me shed this baggage. Let me, like, let go of some of these some of these things that I've held on to and just really dive into this and, 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 and believe that it's never going to be as bad as it was. And just after a month, she released an extended play title, Love Joe, featuring covers of three classic songs. In 2015, she released another EP titled 3, which she referred to as Triangle and a preview of her upcoming album. It had three songs, When Love Hurts, Say Love, and Say My Soul, which was inspired from her father's addiction to drugs. And just around when Jojo was about to release her third EP title, Love Jo 2, and was preparing to come back with her third studio album, she suffered her greatest loss. Her father passed away due to drug overdose. I knew my dad was struggling with narcotics when I was 11, 12. My dad was a headhunter for a while and then he stopped working after he fell on the job on some like ice and then he became 100% disabled and started collecting unemployment. After he stopped working is when he really got into narcotics. I never knew why he was like out of it or why he would fall asleep at the wheel or why he would slur his words. I didn't understand that and my mom kept that from me because she didn't want it to upset me and she didn't want me to look at him in a certain way and I really respect that. But then as I got older, my dad's side of the family, we collectively agreed that, you know, as he's going through rehab for the however many at the time, that we should, you know, disconnect from him for a while. I got a call when I was in LA that my dad had overdosed for the, I don't know how many, I don't know what number of time that was, and that he wasn't gonna make it. Got on a flight immediately from LA and I flew back to Boston and then drove to New Hampshire and met him in the hospital. He was hooked up to a bunch of machines and he had he had fallen and he, he was out of it and he didn't know what was going on. Me and my aunts had discussed, you know, what we were going to do this time. We were going to practice tough love and we were going to cut him off because it was too much for, 
for us as a family to keep going through. But I looked at him and I just saw him hooked up to these machines and, and I just couldn't give up on him. I just couldn't, like, that's my one dad. So I just couldn't do it. And in that moment, I just felt like, who am I to give up on you? I just decided that I was gonna love him. And I'm really glad I did. So it's Friday, October 14th. What day is it? Today is Mad Love Day. In 2016, Jojo finally released her third album title, Mad Love, after a whole decade. It didn't sell as much as her previous albums, but still received a great response from the fans and reached the number one spot on iTunes. In 2017, Jojo left Atlanta Records and launched her own record label, Clover Music, which was initially in a joint deal with Interscope Records, now with Warner Records. Under this label, Jojo released the recorded versions of her previous albums and singles after her 20th birthday, so the fans could finally enjoy her old music on all the online platforms. Near the end of 2019, Jojo released a new self-titled single, Joanna, and gave many fans a chance to appear in the music video. The song is about her musical journey and the difficulties she faced through it, and at the same time declaring that she will be releasing new music very soon. Two weeks later, she released a new single titled Sabotage from her upcoming album, and recently her new song with PJ Martin titled Say So won the Grammy Award for the best R&B song. Say So was a song that PJ wrote and had me in mind for, and he sent it to me uh, on, on Instagram. I mean, like, you know, we exchanged it for like that. <laughs> And I just followed my heart with it. It wasn't any label politics. It wasn't like, oh, you know what? Let's get these two artists together to do this thing. It was like, it was just a great song. And it, it's it's a very encouraging, uh, the response it's, that it's had, that we've gotten to it because I'm just gonna continue to trust my gut and do it. Um, I know this is a songwriter's award, uh, but I'm very clear that, uh, you know, when you write a song, it, it's about the performance of it to make people pay attention to it. And JoJo's voice on this song really made it so special and made a lot of people pay attention to it. So I just got to shout her out. Uh, we, we came here together. I don't know where she is, but um, thank you all. Thank you to the Academy, man. Um, Jojo faced a lot of challenges in her musical career. She was often discouraged and was told to try some other work. But Jojo's love for the music kept her going on, and she never gave up until she started to rise again. She knew that she isn't alone and have the support of her loving fans, and she kept fighting to get her voice back. So many people, so many different lawyers tell me that I would never be able to get out of this contract, that I should find a different career, follow something else, go to college. They're like, you're a smart girl, go to college, pursue something else. I'm like, it's not as simple to me as you're making it sound did you feel like you lost touch with a lot of fans while you were uh, while you were sort of away honestly what, what kept me going was my um my ability to still connect with them on social media right like that's what let me know i wasn't alone and made me feel like you know it wasn't even in the dark times like there was that light they were the light so wow now she is back and we should support her to get her on the top again. She is gonna release her new album this year and the first single from the album titled Small Things is gonna be released very soon. I just, I can't wait to be back here next year talking about my new music that's coming out February 21st. Small Things is the new single. Oh. So, Excited. you know, it just feels great. <laughs> so this was the story of Jojo. And thanks for watching. If you like this video then please give it a thumbs up and leave your comments down below. And if you are new to this channel then please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you stay updated about all of my future videos as well. And you can also follow me on Instagram. So until next time, take care.